So in this short video I want to talk about reading your codes in NVivo and in a second I will explain what exactly I mean by this phrase, reading your codes. Uh, the video itself is taken from my online course on how to use NVivo for qualitative data analysis. In that course I cover all the basics, so starting your project or uh, bringing your data into your project, uh, coding or visualizing uh, the results of your analysis, but I also talk about more complex things such as uh, complex coding queries, uh, including a matrix coding query. So if you're interested, I will put the link in the description. Importantly, this video is not about how to code your data in NVivo. Uh, by reading your codes, I mean the stage where you have started to code your data and some kind of a coding framework uh, has already started to emerge. So now what usually happens is gradually as your coding framework starts to develop, uh, you will be making that shift uh, towards uh, reading your data through your codes. So in other words, reading your codes. And what I mean here is that you don't really want to keep opening the whole document, so the whole uh, interview transcript, for example, but rather as you will become more and more familiar with your coding framework, so you'll uh, start to memorize and remember its contents, uh, you will be reading your data through opening a particular code and seeing the content of that code in your data, rather than opening the whole transcript and looking or scrolling through that transcript. And as you do that, you'll just need a couple of basic tools in order, for example, to be able to see which parts were coded with which codes. So before we jump into that video, I want to give you a really powerful advice about uh, how to code your data, how to analyze your data, what to focus on during your data analysis, uh, analysis. So it's a very universal and very general, yet extremely powerful, in my opinion, advice. So what I like to tell my students is that as your coding framework or your thematic framework develops, what should be happening is that it should be telling the story of your data and also the story of your research in general. So for example, if you share your NVivo file with me, I uh, shouldn't have to read anything about your study in order to know what the focus and the aim of the study was. And also I shouldn't have to read the data or the interview transcripts, for example, in order to know what you have found. So what exactly do I mean by this? The way your thematic framework or coding framework in NVivo is structured should cl uh, clearly communicate to me uh, these two things. So I should be able to see the aims of your study by, as I said, the coding structure. So I will see uh, the main themes or, or the main categories. And by that, of course, I will begin to understand what you focused on, what you wanted to find in your data. And then, of course, by reading, uh, by looking at the sub themes or or subcategories, whatever you like to refer to these, uh, or the child uh, codes and NVivo terms, again, I should be able to see what you have found. So the way they are worded, the, the way they are structured, should clearly uh, communicate all of this together. So what you are trying to find and what exactly you have found. This is an extremely, extremely powerful and important thing to remember. So the next time you look at your coding framework, just think, whether a random person, by looking at that framework, would be able to understand these things, what you are trying to find and what you found. And now let's jump to the video and I will show you a couple of very simple and basic techniques for reading your coding. So the first part of reading the codes that I want to discuss is uh, being able to uh, see what is coded and what is not coded in your transcripts and also which codes have been applied. Because now if I'm reading this transcript, as you can see, there is no indication of whether it has been coded and which codes have been used. And it's much more convenient to be able to see which bits have been coded and which codes have been used. Even in the process of coding the data, I just like to see which bits have already been coded. So firstly, to be able to see which parts have been coded, we need to uh, select the option to highlight the codes, the coding that we have applied. So in this part of the screen, all you need to do is click on this icon 
and then just select uh, whatever option is most suitable. Now a very important thing to know is that if we did not turn our files or our sources into cases, normally what you want to do now is to select the option to highlight all the coding. But since we have turned our sources into cases, I will show you why this may be problematic. So I'll just click uh, to highlight all the coding. As you can see, everything in this transcript is highlighted, which of course doesn't help us at all. And the reason this happens is that cases are also kind of a code. In fact, in uh, the previous versions of NVivo, cases were called case nodes. So the moment you turn your source or your file into a case, what happens is the whole file, the whole transcript uh, is uh, becoming a code, a case node. So later when you click on that case or case node, you can see the whole transcript. And for this reason, if we select uh, the option to highlight all the coding, this is what happens because everything has been coded by this uh, one single case code. So in order to be able to see which parts have been coded with actual real codes that we have developed, not case codes, we need to select the option to highlight coding for selected items. And from here we need to manually select all our codes that we created. I know this is not the most convenient option, but this is just what it is in NVivo. So now that we highlighted all our codes, the one that we created, we just click OK. And this way we can see which parts have been coded with our codes. Now we can see which extracts have been coded, but we still cannot see which codes have been applied to these extracts. So to be able to see this, we need to select this option, Coding Stripes. So all we need to do is click on this icon and select uh, to see all coding. And now next to each coded extract we can see which codes have been applied. So this extract for example has been coded with being overwhelmed and this extract has been coded with creativity. You can also see one very long coding stripe and this is the Christian Bale case code that I previously mentioned. In the second part of this lesson I want to show you how to read our codes from the coding framework. So how to see the content of our coding framework, of what each code includes. So to do that, let's go to our codes folder. And from here, we want to be able to see the content of our codes. So to be able to see all the content under each code, we need to either double click on a given code or right click on it and choose to open node. This way we can see all the extracts that have been coded with the taken risks code. We can also see which files have been coded with this code and if we click on the file name we will be automatically taken to that place where this code appeared and this code will automatically be highlighted. Here on the right hand side we have a couple of different views. So this is called a reference view uh, that we are seeing at the moment but we also have a summary view so it's just a slightly different way of presenting this code because it shows you how many references so how many times it appeared in each file and also what the coverage is so you can see the percentage of uh, how much of the text this code covered and then we have the text view which is uh, one of my favorite uh, views or options especially as our coding framework develops and we have more and more codes and also a lot of different files. So here you can very clearly see each file and you can quickly access all of these codes. So this is all about reading the codes. Knowing these options will help you to navigate through your coding framework. And in the following video, we will continue working on our code. So we'll be decoding and we'll be merging or uh, joining several codes together.